Okay, I'm back. Uh, I was saying before I looked down and found out that I'm at 12 minutes, and I probably will lose that video unless I cut it in half, uh, is that anything that comes up with a D means if I pick, you know, a program and it needs these uh, underlying programs, then it, it'll select it for me automatically as a dependency. Uh, fart. There's Org Vorbis. I don't know all of these. I really don't. Speaks I've used before. Vorbis I've used before. Wave I think lets you listen to wave files. And you wonder, well, why don't I just install everything? Because suddenly, if if it doesn't work, then you have you can have a problem. Okay, so let's see. Dude, I'm not desktop utilities. Are we talking about? You know what? You know, cancel, cancel this with tab key. Thank you very much. And what I'm going to do is I want, there we go, KDE, yeah. Now, as far as I'm concerned, you can, I don't want KDE 4, oh boy. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. I don't like KDE 4, but you know what, I'll just do it. I wonder if I could... So I got to go down all this crap. Okay, so it's giving me everything here. You have to hit the tab key to go to count. You have to kind of hit the tab key to get to where you want. And cancel doesn't mean you're you're done. I, yes, I do want Linux binary compatibility. And oh wait, I did hit cancel, but it's okay. All right. Tyler, okay. Hard to tell what they've got. Uh, what's miscellaneous? See, as I pick things, more, more of the dependencies show up. Oh, okay. Every time I hit escape, it wants to do that. Okay. Um, I don't care about Hungarian. I do care about printing. And let's see if I can get. I want cups. <laughs> Already? You don't seem to care about that. Shells, okay. Now I like KSH. I'll also give myself B. You know, you can pick which shell you want. Uh, web browsers. Of course, I'm going to want Firefox. Apache is not a browser. <laughs> okay. Where's Firefox? Hmm. Probably because they're calling it Mozilla? I don't know. Maybe, oh, these are servers? What are they? X11? What's this? Oh, they're giving me GNOME. I don't really get... Some of this is redundant, as you can see. I really wish I could do KD3, but I guess I'm screwed. Okay. What's going to matter, I think, mostly is that I have some way to get in with a, a window manager, <laughs> uh, which actually was KDE. It's a little bit, you know, when I pick KDE, that's a window manager. That belongs down under X11, but I think they're doing that to make it um, user-friendly. So I just hit enter a couple times, and hopefully it's going to start spinning around and putting things where they belong, and before I run out of breath, I'll take another drink. And I'm almost done with my recording here. This was a little more tricky <laughs> to set up. Um, on my Alza mixer, I'll just do this one more time. Pretty sure that's the last thing I was in. Uh, F4 is capture for Alza, and one thing I did not notice before is that I'm plugged in here to the front mic, and you could, I might could change it now because uh, you know. But if I hit the up or down arrow, it would say something like rear mic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so I did an additional recording after I was done, and nothing came in. And the reason why nothing came in is because it was capturing the audio from the mic in the back and not in the front. And um, 
for, for reasons unknown to me and beyond my knowledge of KDE, I don't see down here in the bottom the mixer icon that used to be present. Now what's going on? Please check the debug screen. I've never had that happen. But, of course, since I'm doing a video, it has to happen. So the Linux binary compatibility didn't install them. Maybe it already came with it. It's doing a pretty good job of adding these packages pretty quickly. It's using the command called package add, pkg underscore add. Anyway, so getting back to this, this will soon click out. This is going to be a little slow, but I guess uh, for the previous D install, the, you, know, you may as well see how it works and then what happens when I boot back in. Um, now that boot manager, I'm not quite sure if it's going to end up editing the master boot record. That's, that was one thing that was unclear to me. Some of these things, they, kind of, they just kind of assume you know how it works. I'm getting trouble, so... I'm hoping that when I picked use the FreeBSD boot manager that it indeed uh, affected the master boot record because right now the master boot record has a grub entry in there for for Linux that will try to look for a VM Linux file and a, a, and a NIT RD RAM disk which it won't find because the disk has been formatted <laughs> so I may be SOL Upon reboot, I will find out. Um, you know, why is it doing Eth Ethiopian fonts? <laughs> Don't care about Ethiopian fonts. But I think because I just start picking things in bulk, um, yeah, so yeah, NetBSD, you don't even get this. At least I didn't even get this chance. I'm sure there's a way to install packages that are present on the CD, but it was completely unapparent to me. I, I know there was a little blurb somewhere, I think somewhere in the downloading NetBSD um, thingamabob, but it just didn't click with me. I guess I'll stop now because it's pretty uneventful, and then um, continue when, it's, when this is done and I have a question or something different other than something's installing.